quick one. I've got to be really quick because there's some students who want to come in here and use the lab. They're doing some revision oh, exams or something. Um, so we looked at the forearm and the hand last time. And sorry, I started talking about extensor carpi. Oh, no, I started talking about the extensor carpi radialis muscles and I flipped and started calling them flexor carpi radialis brevis and flexor carpi radialis longus. Sorry, thank you, Terence, for pointing that out. Um, I've added a little annotation, so watch out for that. Yeah. So this week, we got that far. How about we do that bit? Should we do that bit? Just add the next set of muscles on there. So here's the hand. Um, I've got the bones as well, so we should maybe talk about some of the carpal bones. Should we start with the carpal bones? Can do. Right, so let's stick with the right hand because that model is the right hand as well. So here's the right hand, here's the thumb. Here's the first metacarpal of the thumb. The first metacarpal articulates with trapezium. Trapezium is here. So trapezium then has scaphoid and scaphoid is between trapezium and the radius. And it's the scaphoid that people break when they fall and break their fall with a flexed wrist and so on. And of course, we were talking about the anatomical snuff box. If, you, if somebody's broken their scaphoid bone, you can often tell that it's broken by uh, poking inside the anatomical snuff box in between those tendons. That's where you find the scaphoid bone. And if they get pain, they may well have broken their scaphoid bone. The other thing I always remember is this little bone here, like a P, so that's PZ form. Also over this side we've got this hook. This is the hook of the hamate, so the hamate is over here. So this is over by digiti minimi, the little finger. Um, and PZ form is beside triquetrum. So now we've got three more bones left. These two in the middle, we've got capitate and lunate. So capitate is the big one here. So capitate is articulating, articulating with this metacarpal here, uh, and lunate is around here. So trapezium, scaphoid, and then the little bone. So that's trapezoid. So trapezium at the base of the thumb, scaphoid between the trapeze trapezium and the radius bone, and trapezoid is the little bone in there. And then we've got capitate and lunate. And then the one with the hook, that's the hamate, hook of the hamate. This P here is pisiform, and pisiform is on top of triquetrum. So those are the bones of the wrist. What about the muscles? The muscles. So here are the muscles of the hand. Um, we talked about palmaris longus last week as one of these tendons here. So palmaris longus continues and it flattens out into this aponeurosis. This is a palmar aponeurosis, this flattened connective tissue sheet, which actually is tightly adherent to the skin. This is really awkward to dissect away from the skin because it, it sticks so tightly to it. And it's important when gripping things, it gives you a good grip as you move your hand to hold onto something. So let's take that off. Ooh. Oh, blimey. Um, there's usually... Um, a palmaris brevis muscle in there as well, which is missing from this. So right hand, should we take the thumb first? So the thumb we said was the pollex, so the muscles of the thumb are pollicis muscles, and we have this lump here, this mass, right, which is the thenar eminence. Uh, literally it means, you know, that bit of your hand, that's where the word came from, it's the, the ball of the thumb. And we have some muscles here. now. We talked about, we talked about, uh, so we've got flexion and extension and abduction and adduction. So these muscles are doing those jobs and are named appropriately. So this muscle out here, right, so if you, if you contract this muscle, you're going to be abducting the thumb. And we saw there is a long abductor of the thumb this is a short abductor of the thumb, so this is um, abductor pollicis brevis. Abductor pollicis brevis is going from uh, the scaphoid and trapezium bones and inserting into part of the, the connective tissues of the thumb, but also into the, the proximal phalanx. Here we've got, so this is the muscle that's going to help us flex. This is flexor pollicis brevis, also going from trapezium out to the first phalangeal bone. Uh, Abductor pollicis brevis and flexor pollicis brevis. Now if we take those off, we see the third muscle 
of the thenar eminence, and this here is the um, opponent's pollicis muscle. So opponent's pollicis, that again goes from the, tra uh, the trapezium bone, but it passes to the first metacarpal. And that does a couple of things, because rather than flexing the thumb, or it, it, it flexes that joint, but it also rotates that joint a little bit. So if we're talking about if we're talking about opposition of bringing the thumb and the little finger together, opponent's pollicis gives some rotation to help that. So those are the three muscles of the thenar eminence. Those are innervated by the median nerve. Um, there's another muscle here which you can see, if I take that off that helps. This is uh, adductor pollicis. So if that is abduction, then this is adduction then adductor pollicis is bringing the thumb back to the fingers. This is what adductor pollicis is doing. Now this has got two heads, it's got two parts, um, so there's usually some ulnar innervation there. So while the muscles of the thenar eminence are innervated by the median nerve, this adductor pollicis muscle is also innervated by the ulnar nerve. So if a patient has um, median nerve weakness, then they still may be able to adduct their thumb just fine. So that's the thumb. On the other side of the hand, we have muscles that let us move our little finger independently. Gives us a little bit more control. So these muscles are of the little finger, these muscles are of digiti minimi. So if these muscles are of the little finger, they're of um, they're digiti minimi muscles. And we can use the same thinking again. So if you abduct your little finger, then there's a muscle here which will be abductor digiti minimi. Uh, so that's, that's this muscle here, and of course this is flexion. Oh look, see, I've got to flex other fingers. If I flex my little finger, that's, I'm using flexor digiti minimi as well as other muscles, but then this muscle then is anterior, so this is flexor digiti minimi. This is in fact flexor digiti minimi brevis because there is also a flexor digiti minimi longus, which I think we talked about last time. Um, flexor digiti minimi brevis, is coming from the hook of the hamate and abductor digiti minimi is coming from pisiform and then they're extending into the extensor retinaculum these connected tissues at the back of the finger and into the uh, the proximal phalangeal bone of the fifth digit now if we take those muscles off there we go we can see this deeper muscle and this deeper muscle look how it's kind of twisting around here this is opponent's digiti minimi. So this is the opposite. Uh, this is the matching muscle to opponent's pollicis. And uh, so op opponent's digiti minimi is passing from the hook of the hamate to the fifth metacarpal. And if you contract that muscle, that's going to rotate this joint and probably aid in flexion. So it's helping that opposition movement. So that's opponent's digiti minimi. So those are the muscles of the hypothenar eminence. Oh, the hypothenar muscles are also innervated by the ulnar nerves. So ulnar nerve, median nerve. So thenar eminence, hypothenar eminence, adductor pollicis. All right, we're almost there. Um, I took this off. So these are the tendons of flexor digitorum superficialis and beneath those flexor digitorum profundus that we looked at last time and we have these muscles here. These muscles are pretty unique in the body and in instead of passing from bone to bone they're passing from connective tissue to connective tissue. These are the lumbricals. So these lumbricals, the lumbricals pass from the tendons of flexor digitorum profundus to the extensor hoods, the extensor connective tissues of the fingers. Look, you can see this here. Right? Now the lumbricals, what well, they'll do, this is a weird thing, but uh, um, they kind of, they help flex the metacarpophalangeal joint while also pulling on the extensor sheaths to keep the phalangeal joints extended, right? So it lets, it's, it lets you do, it kind of lets you do that. It lets you bend a straightened finger. These are the lumbricals giving us that control. All right. Um, two more sets. We have interosseous muscles. Interosseous, literally between bones. So we've got these metacarpal uh, bones in here, right? And we have muscles running from the metacarpal bones up again to the, the extensor hoods. 
and we have palmar interosseous muscles and we have dorsal interosseous muscles which we'd be able to see if we took all these apart. The palmar interosseous muscles pass from the metacarpals to those extensor hoods and the dorsal interosseous muscles do the same but they're on the dorsal side. The we can use, we can remember pad and dab. So the palmar interosseous muscles adduct, the dorsal interosseous muscles abduct, pad and dab, right? They're all innervated by the ulnar nerve, so that's a test of the ulnar nerve. So abduction, adduction. Um, okay, so we've looked at the carpal bones and the metacarpals and the, phalange the phalanges. Um, in the hand then, we want to think about the palmar aponeurosis the muscles of the thenar eminence, innervated by the median nerve, the muscles of the hypothenar eminence, innervated by the ulnar nerve, the lumbricals, and the palmar interosseous muscles, and the dorsal interosseous muscles, which let us adduct and abduct, also innervated by the ulnar nerve. And then don't forget adductor pollicis, uh, and forms this, forms kind of, this, is this bit here, this part of the web. All right? Right, I'm done. I've got students who want to use the room.